I think you probably know second half of the season. The the thing with this 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 year though is it's a little different different because one, if you look at their schedule, it's pretty it's really easy until like what like maybe Green Bay, Tennessee, it's later in the year. I think they've got a very favorable schedule. Hey. I, 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 I'm just saying here. I saw my boy at Philly 500 over on my Twitter page. Hit me up on the Gardner Minshew. I got to get that up here. Let's bring in my boy here. Philly 500 here. I got something here for you, brother. By the way, please hit the like button. So I want to I wanna show you this here. You're going to dig this here. So I, I, obviously, as you know, we got a billion haters, you and I out there. Is, oh, sure. I mean, because, you know, that... Anytime we say something, here, I got this story here, and I want to read this to you. And I don't know if I have a problem with it. You tell me if you have a problem with it. Okay. Cowboys don't have much depth at the quarterback position. There's an article on my Twitter page. They're looking to upgrade the backup position at quarterback. And when talking about Gardner Minshew would immediately elevate the quarterback room, you could really sit there and really have something special here. Tim Hom of Cowboys Country, which is associated with the team, quickly shot down the trade idea saying it didn't make sense given how Dallas Brass gushes over this kid Rush. Hom also dropped an interesting nugget saying that Minshew doesn't have the best reputation as a locker room guy in the league. What do you make of that? I don't know. I mean, it's really the first I've heard of uh, Gardner Minshew not being likable in the locker room. Um so I think that, you know, it's it could very easily be portrayed as he's not a likable guy because he's a competitive guy, because maybe he wants to start. So I I don't put a lot into it. But I, I just think it's funny that the Cowboys, who are rivals, think that their people actually think they're entitled to trade for one of our backup quarterbacks. Like, like who, you're who a team. <laughs> yeah. Like, we're going to give you our backup quarterback who's making $900,000. Of course he's an upgrade over, over Cooper Rush. He stinks. He stinks. So um, I don't put a lot of stock in it. But, I mean, I really don't know. I, I, I don't know if he's likable or not. I have no idea. But he, here, here was my take on it. I said this. I wasn't a very good backup, too, for a while. Right. Because when somebody said something to me and I was out playing the guy in front of me, it right. would bug me that they had him ahead of me. And I made my feelings known very well that, and sometimes Philly, it may have come off where I wasn't the best teammate on the planet. My coaches mm -hmm. had to talk to me every now and mm -hmm. to me, I think that's just more competitive that the kid wants to start. Remember last year, remember he went to Nick. Yeah. Sarai, he even asked him, how can I start? He goes, you can't. Yeah. So yeah. When yeah. Told I something like that. I mean, that's gotta be gut wrenching when you're told you have no chance of ever being the starter in Philadelphia. Yeah, and I'm sure he's looking at this team and this roster right now going, oh, man, you put me out with these guys, and I'll light it up. So, I mean, I, I've never heard anything uh, uh, when it came to Gardner Minshew about him not being likable. That's the first I heard about it. Um, and the only thing I can think of is, like you said, that he wanted to start um, last year. He went to, to to Nick Sirianni, and that's the only thing I can think of. Um, but – I mean, I, to me, I, I, I don't I'm more it's... insulted by the Cowboys thinking that they can just trade for whoever they want from us. <laughs> All right, you I know? want to bring another story up. So Tim McManus from ESPN is out there covering. And I think he's been covering the Eagles since 2016 for ESPN. Mm -hmm. And unlike a lot of the reports that we're getting about how everything looks so great at camp, his takeaway was that A.J. Brown and Jalen Hurts were struggling and that it needed more polishing, and the two guys even addressed it. Concerns, no concerns, your take on it? No, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't really have any concerns. I mean, what do you think? What, what do you think about it? I, my, my problem is with the practice time. Right. Okay, that story that they had in the Enquirer where they said that they're going to tailor back the OTAs. Now, look, helmets and shorts – Right. But they're going to carry that philosophy, Philly, yeah. into the July two-a-days training camp. <laughs> and when you're pulling yeah. back practices and you're hearing stuff like that, 
And you're hearing also that the quarterback's not going to go into the exhibition season well, and he's going to start. How are yeah. you supposed to get better? Well, that's that's my issue. I I'm not I don't really I'm not so much worried about the OTAs as much as if you play in the preseason. Like if you're playing in the preseason, I'm okay with it. Now, if if they're not playing at all in the preseason, and you know, Hertz has like one series in the first game, and that's it. And then you only had six OTAs, no mini camps. Then I, I think it's an issue. Um, but to me, uh, they got to play in preseason. You know, don't you think that that played last year into the two and five start also? It, it could have. You know, it, it's funny because I was thinking about that the other day. I was thinking, you know, did that hurt them early? And then I think about the game, the first game of the season against Atlanta. They came out yeah. and destroyed them. So it was like, wouldn't they have been rusty the first half of that game or something? So it, it's hard to know. I mean, I get that you're worried about injuries and stuff like that. But, you know, you 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 know, you played. I mean, back in the days when there was two days, I almost think that the, the less contact that these guys have going into the season, it makes them get injured more likely. Jimmy Johnson agrees season. with you. He tweeted that yeah. on my Twitter and said the same thing. I'll tell you something else, Philly. Watch this. 2017, the Eagles were a mass unit. Last yep. year, you guys were as healthy as you've ever been, and you got destroyed in the opening playoff round. I mean, right. what, what's what's the true deal here, man? I mean, you know, what know. if you're worried about getting hit by a bus when you leave your house? That's a you thing, don't you think? Yeah, I I, 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 I do. I think so. I, I think it's, it's like, to me, I'm almost like, well, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen, but I'm not going to hold back on these guys, you know? Um, I, I really think that the preseason they got to play, and and as long as they play, I I think you know they only have six OTA practices running around in shorts. I I mean that's fine, you know, but but they got to play in preseason. How about this little nugget that I got out of Merrill Reese the other day? So just Xander and I had him on. And he was talking. He goes, "Yeah, one of the greatest moves of all time was by Jeffrey Lurie." In 2017, how about this one? He goes to Howie and he says this to him. Why don't we bring Foles back? It was his call wow. to bring Foles back, and it wasn't wow. Howie's call to bring Foles back. Oh, you so think we're, we so, brought him back this year? No. I, I don't think they should have brought him back this year. But I do think it's funny that Howie can't even get credit for that, right? People always tell me I don't give Howie credit for anything, you know. It's it's crazy. But um, I don't think you should have brought Foles back this year. Uh, it, it, I guess – I mean, I understand it. But I'm going to tell you from a selfish standpoint, like of making, you know, videos and content, streaming the games and watching it, from a personal standpoint, I don't want to hear after one completion or one incompletion, one interception, one bad quarter, put Foles in, put Foles in. And they're – people who feel that he should never have left so as soon as as hurts struggles they're going to be calling for him now maybe hurts can handle it but i don't want to deal with it <laughs> you know what i mean so from a selfish standpoint no nah, i don't want him back do you think there's too much hype on this team no no i i i don't think so i i think there's some people that are trying to associate with ah, oh, this is the dream team this is like the dream team again i i think that this they've built this team really good because they got young players that are going to be good for, for years to come. I, I don't think it's, I don't think there's too much hype. I, I don't know any Eagle fans saying, Oh, we're going to the Super Bowl. We're going to win the Super Bowl. I'm expecting to win the division and then win a home playoff game. I think that's a good step. So I don't think there's too much hype, you know, but it does put more pressure on Hertz and we got to find out what we got him. We, we got to throw him to the wolves this year and find out if he's the guy. How about this one, too? Take me back because you've been covering the team a lot longer than me here. Go back to 17. What was the hype like around June 9th going into that year? 20, was uh, there, was there anything in your mind where you went like this? This group of talented guys that we have here are top four teams in the league and they're Super Bowl favorites to win the thing. Was there any of that talk? No. Why? No. I, I, I don't think anybody thought that that 2017 team going into 2017 was going to win a Super Bowl. I mean, I, I, I remember. I, I mean, I, I was my second year on YouTube. So I was saying 
I thought they could win the division maybe where they could get to the playoff. I thought they were a playoff team maybe if everything broke right. I did not expect them to be a Super Bowl team. Matter of fact, I can tell you the exact game that I said this team can win a Super Bowl. That was uh, it was Monday night game versus Carolina. That was the game that you watched and said, yeah, this team is good. But I don't think there was any expectations um, like this uh, coming into that season. So you, Plus, you, you think you had, it turned in that Carolina Monday night game where everyone started going like this? I think so, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. this team here looks like yeah. they could – they could do some damage. So, what yeah. do you remember? What how many games that was in? Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna say I would have guessed between six and eight games in. It had well, to halfway be halfway through the season. About that, yeah. It, it was because the Eagles had the narrative at that point. Well, they're not beating anybody good. They're not playing good. I think Carolina was pretty good and was in Carolina on Monday Night Football. I think it was Monday night, Monday or Sunday night. I can't remember which one, but, but that that game was the game where I think a lot of people, including myself, came away saying, this team this team could go far, you know? And um, I thought at that point, yeah, they have something there. But going into the season, no. I mean, I thought, look, I said, okay, Alshon's a, a, a decent pickup, but he's older. Uh, Torrey Smith is older. I, I think this team's a, a playoff team maybe. Did not think that that they would be as good as they were. Um. You know, that's interesting you say, because I would throw this at you here, too. Do you look at this game? Do you look at this team and do this? Okay, I'm going to give them until we get to do the same thing with that team. That With, with what we did with that team, we're going to look at – um, Tone says Eagles beat Carolina on a Thursday night. Uh, so Thursday are night. we going to know, Tone, are we going to know by week eight whether or not this team is legit? Or do we know it sooner? I think I think you I think you probably know. I think you probably know second half of the season. The the thing with this 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 year though is it's a little different different because one, if you look at their schedule, it's pretty it's really easy until like what like maybe Green Bay, Tennessee, it's later in the year. I think they've got a very favorable schedule. That's so I think you're gonna they got Giants, Bears, Cowboys, Saints. And Giants after Tennessee, and then before that, they have I think they got Green Bay. Uh, that's going to be Packers, Colts, Washington, yeah. Texans, Steelers coming out of the bye. So I, I feel like I feel like the, there's going to if the Eagles go out and light it up, people are going to say that they haven't beaten anybody good. I can almost guarantee that's going to happen. But I think by week eight or nine, because listen, in the NFL, if you if you could get home field advantage, if you're one or two seed, you have an opportunity to go to at least an NFC championship game, uh, I think. And I think that they can get to an NFC championship game if everything falls right. Um, you know, I don't think the NFC is that good. I, I really don't. If you look at the AFC and the teams in the AFC compared to the NFC, I, I think there's maybe three or four teams that you can say, yeah, they're better. But, uh, yeah, I, I think by week eight we'll, we'll have an idea. I, I think so. Two last yeah. questions here for you. Now – this is more of a f philosophy question here when it comes to Jalen. Um, I said this yesterday. Hypothetically, there's some injuries on the team. The team doesn't have a giant one-loss record. Say it's eight and nine. Year two with Josh Allen, the Bills took a step backwards to take three right. steps forward. What if Jalen... All of a sudden, throws for 4,200 yards, 30, 30 touchdowns, nine picks, 500 yards. But the team's eight and nine. Do you look that? Because to me, I said this yesterday, Philly. To me, being an 11-win team, getting bounced in the opening round of a playoff versus having my quarterback question being answered, that doesn't really do it for me. My quarterback mm -hmm. question is the thing that I need answered the most because I got right. two ones next year, and I've yeah. got to determine whether or not that guy, if he yeah. takes these steps forward, 4,200 passing yards, like I said, that'd be 1,100-yard increase. 30 touchdowns, that'd be almost 14 TD increase from a right. year ago. I mean, wouldn't yeah. we look at that and go like this? Wasn't really the most successful season, one loss-wise. We took a step back, but this kid took a giant leap forward. 
Isn't that the number one priority here? Yes. Absolutely. You have to know if he's the franchise quarterback. And, and I, I, I do think, I mean, obviously wins matter, but it's not all tied to that. I mean, if the defense is giving up 30 points a game or whatever it is, and, and you're losing games that way. Uh, yeah. He's still, it's, we still could have an eight and eight season or eight, and nine season. And we could be saying to ourselves, yeah, look, he is the guy. We know it. We also could go, you know, what 11 and five and go, we're not sure. We're still that's, not sure. See, that's my I. That's my point. The eleven wins. That's great. Everyone wants a winning team, but if you get rocked in the opening round of a playoff, right? What's the point? Okay. Right. But if I answer the question, hey, now we could take those two ones, and right. we can go in different directions, and even solidify the team even more. And I still got the kid on a one more year deal on a rookie contract. Yeah. Okay, right. then we have to negotiate into something else. Where that's right, second rounders don't have an option, so they have to do a deal with him next year, going into the 2022 season. However, yeah. I just think that that is more of a priority for them than really winning 11 games. Let me ask you this on Sirianni here. I said this yesterday, and you could disagree with me or not on this. I said I go, and I threw this out as a topic: is Sirianni on the hot seat? And everyone goes, how could he be on the hot seat? I go, well, this is an organization that fired Andy Reid and also Doug Peterson. Yeah. These were coaches that one's going to Canton and the other one is trying to build his resume to go to Canton. Already has right. one of those Lombardi trophies. And to me, how he makes those coaches, just like players, look like pawns on his chessboard. And they believe that you win championships in the front office. So that position – is not as solid as people think it is because the coach has very little say in the direction of the football team. He's part of it, but Philly, he's not the end all. How he makes all decisions on rosters, coaches on who they're on the team there, trades, everything. So is Sir, what does Sirianni have to do to show us that he's also the future in Philadelphia? I, well, I think I think he's got to be able to go out there and and show that you can bring in guys like AJ Brown and Devon. You have Devontae Smith, got and you know how to utilize this talent, right? It's kind of like Gannon. Like Gannon said, "Well, I didn't have the personnel last year to do what I want. Well, now you do. I got to see Nick Sirianni go out and be able to use these guys and put them in the right positions to be successful." Um, I think they, he did that somewhat last year when he changed his offense to a more running uh, type style. But I think you're going to get away from that. I think they're going to be throwing more this year. So he's got to put these guys in a position to succeed. That's what I think he has to do. Or he could be in trouble. Yeah. Pastine or Gabagool? Gabagool. 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 I'm going to be eating Gabagool at the pool. You know what I mean? Tell Cabana Boy. I see you got Cabana Boy in there. Uh, the pool hall needs its towels, buddy. Needs its <laughs> towels and needs its fans. I'm going there. We, you need to get back to work, Cabana Boy. You know what I'm saying? I got to go swimming. Get back <laughs> towels, to work. Towels over to the yes, left. Towels. <laughs> Come on, Cabana Boy. I see you in there. <laughs> Philly, thank you, brother. Appreciate All right, man. You're Love always you. awesome, man. I awesome, appreciate man. it, my Thanks. friend. That is my friend. Philly 500. <laughs> hey, towel boy. <laughs> oh, my God almighty. Oh, good. Hey, Big Sills here for Morgan & Morgan, where the fee is free. If you're hurt or injured on the job, finding that attorney is one of the most important things that you could possibly do for your family. For the people, it is not a slogan. It is absolutely who they are and what they do. For the last 30 years, Morgan & Morgan, John's folks have collected over $13.5 billion worth of compensation for their clients because this is who they are. Over 800 attorneys strong in offices in Philly, New York, and Florida, and across the country. No case is too small when it comes to Morgan & Morgan. Call them, 800-512-1600. That's 800-512-1600. Open 24-7. Seven days a week, 800 512 1600. And when you call Morgan and Morgan, tell them Big Sill sent you. I'm John Morgan of Morgan and Morgan. When you're hit from behind in a car crash, the insurance company may try to say you can't possibly be hurt. It was only a few miles an hour. It's simply not true. You see, here's the thing getting hit at 10 miles per hour is like falling off of this. 15 miles per hour? 
like this, and only 25 miles per hour, this. Injured, dial pound law. There's only one Morgan & Morgan.